have a history together. They have a history together. We'll come to that. Um, and Joe Danko of the MPP now comes in in second. Of course, there's nothing like second in, in parliamentary, parliamentary race. You've lost. You lost uh, with 8,195 votes. Okay. Okay. 81. The difference here is... 81. 81. 81 votes. 81 votes. And you know, I was telling you about uh, Joe Dankwa. Now, Joe Dankwa was the first member of parliament for the Tyne constituency. In that, con in that election in 2004, he beats Ibrahim Ahmed to it. And in 2008, Ibrahim Ahmed gets his revenge. Mm. He beats Joe Dankwa. And 2012... Let me pull the map. And you love to what you're saying. Because yes. The map tells you the story. What you, your point is that this entire area here, don't forget 81. That's all it took to win wow. in this race this year. Your, your point is this entire area here was part of one big constituency. constituency. Yes. And these two gentlemen played in there. Exactly. We'll come to this story because it's a very interesting story Winston will track for you. Um, the race between these two gentlemen. Elton Broby is joining us live right now. Guess where? From the private residence of the incumbent president, Nano Dankwa Kufado. Hello, Elton. Nice to see you. How have you been? Uh, Elton, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Evans. And it's been very tiring and, and stressful, but I'm happy that it's coming to an end very soon. And we are now at the residence of President Kufado here at Nima. And as you can see behind me, the stage is set for what is likely to be a response to the president from the announcement that we are all waiting to hear from the Electoral Commission that we are told will come up pretty soon. And already uh, there are so many supporters of the MPP at the, at the, at the, at the, at the frontage of this building, jubilating, dancing, and you know, going up and down the road saying that they've won the uh, 2020 uh, general elections. It's unclear uh, what is motivating uh, this particular feeling of optimism. But what we do know is that the MPP at their own coalition center came up with some figures according to them put them ahead of John Dramani Mahama of the NDC. Indeed, uh, some few minutes ago, we got an update from the M MPP's coalition centre, and according to them, they are only left with 736 uh, out of the over 38,000 polling centres across the country that they've been collecting. And according to the MPP, the figures they have put them at 51.7% of the popular votes, and then also put uh, John Dramani Mahama at 47%, meaning that they are on course to win a second term and form the next government. Now, I'm told that this information uh, has trickled down to the supporters and indeed President Okufuado, who has been in-house in since voting at uh, Chebi in the Eastern region. Now, in his private home here, as you can see behind me, uh, senior government officials are already there, including the Vice President of the Republic, Dr. Mahmoud Dubaumia. Uh, the, the Speaker of Parliament was here a while ago and then we have very senior government officials, friends who have come here, and they've been here since morning, I'm told, monitoring, listening to uh, radio, television, getting themselves abreast with the information that's going on across the country as far as uh, the 2020 election is concerned. But we are getting to the curtain call where we'll be told who won and the way forward. And that is how come behind me you will find the Ghana flag and the, and the stage that has been set for President Kufuadu to speak once the Electoral Commission is done with their presentation. As to when they will do that, we do not know. The media, the, the, the media is here. Supporters of the MPP are out of, of the gates. I, I can see the house of the of, of, the, of President Kufuado putting together some tables and chairs, uh, which I'm told is likely to be some sort of a celebration. A while ago, we were told that President Kufuado received two calls: one from the presidential candidate of the Great Consolidated Popular Party, GCPP, uh, they participated in the just-ended general elections. Henry Latte was a presidential candidate, and we are, we are, I'm told that he called in to concede defeat. Uh, he also congratulated President Kufuado and wished him well. We are also told that uh, uh, Kofi Apalu of the LPG also called, uh, also called to concede defeat and also congratulated President Kufuado uh, on his re-election. That's the information we are picking. What we are all waiting to hear is that final declaration from the Electoral Commission 
which direction that will go will inform the former ship in which President Kufaru will speak to the nation. But from the feelings I'm getting from the from the grounds here, it does appear to me that uh, they are uh, sure of victory in some few minutes to come. Evan, that's how, that, that, that's why we are here. We've set up and we are here to bring you every minute of what will transpire here from the Nima residence of President Kufuado. Elton, don't go anywhere. Stay with me because I want to hear from the people themselves there in your background uh, as we await for this. The siege is set in the private residence of the uh, president and we don't know what it's going to be, whether it's going to be a concession or it's going to be a victory, uh, a, a, an acceptance uh, a speech there. So stay with me. We'll get come back to you shortly. As you can see on your screen, we have with us Max Olagbaba, uh, who has been embedded with the John Mahama team for a long time right now. And he's now uh, joining us uh, with the very latest also from the camp of the uh, flag bearer of the NDC, uh, Maxwell. What is a story from the JM come as we build and wait for the official yeah. declaration? Well, yeah. uh, we're here at the um, campaign five, office, um, three, Evans, three. of the NDC presidential candidate, John Mahama, here um, in Cantobans. Quite a number um, of supporters um, are gathered here. Um, there are some pressmen also here um, waiting to um, hear the NDC presidential candidates address the nation um, in some minutes. Um, if you come here, the NDC campaign manager himself, Joshua Halaby, um, he's seated just um, some meters away from where I'm standing interacting with others who are gathered here. I've also seen um, some um, big weeks of the um, National Democratic Congress um, also um, here. Just some minutes ago, the um, NDC, um, can, uh, I mean the NDC um, MP for Ningo Pram Pram, um, MP elect um, Sam George, was also um, here. I've seen quite a number of um, big weeks of the NDC who are gathered here today um, as the NDC presidential candidate addresses the nation in some minutes. Well, if you come here, it's more of optimism um, for majority of the people who um, I've interacted with. So optimism that um, they are controlling um, the um, parliamentary um, seats. Um, uh, they say, many of the people I've spoken to tell me, um, NDC supporters I've spoken to here tell me that they believe and they're optimistic that they have majority seats um, in parliament. Um, indeed, um, quite a number of those I've spoken to also believe that that they have won um, the um, presidential race. Um, so really, um, we're just waiting to hear what the NDC presidential candidate um, has to tell us, um, whether um, he um, is putting out there that they have won the elections or not. We are unable to tell, but indeed we've been uh, we've been monitoring um, his Facebook page, and he has been thanking NDC supporters for um, Ghanaians for going out there to vote for change, and um, we do not know if um, his message this evening will be couched in the same you know um, direction. But we just wait patiently um, to hear him and what um, he has to say. Just some minutes ago, um, I had interactions with the um, general secretary of the NDC, Johnson Asiedu Nkitia. He addressed the press conference um, earlier, and we're asking him for some preliminary comments um, before the, pres um, the NDC presidential candidate's address. But he said that um, every message um, will be delivered um, by the NDC presidential candidate and that he does not want to um, preempt um, what he has to say. Other um, party bigwigs who are gathered here today are also not willing to talk. They say they do not want to preempt what the NDC presidential candidate is going to say. So as it stands now, we are all waiting patiently um, with bated breath um, to hear what um, he has to tell us. Okay, uh, but he see there himself. Is John Mahama in that room? residence with you right now? Yes, um, he is um, just some meters away from where I'm standing. Um, he is in the building. Um, just some meters away from where I'm standing um, right now. Um, but from where I'm standing, I can see um, some some of the party officials um, in that structure right now. Um, the um, the Greater Accra Regional Chairman of the NDC, um, Adi Kuka, um, is also here. He just came out from that structure. So quite a number of them are in that building. And we're waiting for him um, to just walk out and then um, talk to us. But there are quite a number um, uh, of supporters also um, gathered here on the compound. If you come here, uh, the, and his campaign office has a very huge compound. Um, 
right now half of the um, parking lot here has been filled um, with um, vehicles and my camera technician um, is just trying to give you an idea right now of the number of people um, you know who are gathered here so all of these people party supporters um, gathered here some of them are also um, standing um, outside pressmen also um, here waiting um, patiently um, for that address by the NDC um, presidential um, candidate Evans. Uh, Maxwell, uh, thank you. But Maxwell, don't go anywhere just yet. We don't want to miss anything. And so stand by for me. In fact, I'm also going to stand by uh, because what you see in the background is that there is anticipation. When you see that something is about to happen in the residence of JM, just as we saw in the residence of Nala Dankwa Kufado. Exactly, Evans. And one of the things, you know, uh, listening to Maxwell, listening uh, to, uh, you know, Elton, it looks like both are confident a victory or are confident of either winning the presidential or the parliamentary. I want to go now to the Electoral Commission headquarters where uh, Israel Lai is standing by with uh, Madame Sylvia Noa. She speaks for the Commission. Uh, Israel, do we have any clarity yet when the Electoral Commission will make this of, uh, official declaration that they had postponed? No, we don't have any clarity yet, and which is why I'm actually speaking with uh, Madame Sylvia Anno right now. So we're seeking to know. We, you had earlier indicated that we're going to uh, you're going to declare the results at 5 p.m. But you also came back to tell us that uh, the 5 p.m. wasn't going to be possible. What time that we expect, or can we expect that this declaration is going to be made? Thank you very much. Um, let me say that um, during the last, the very last. Uh, presenting before the election, somebody posed the same question that um, should the Electoral Commission be unable to declare the result by five, um, what would happen? And I remember the chairperson of the Electoral Commission telling the person that he wasn't casting iron stone and that you are working with uh, I mean, the process said that if the, the if the results come in, you know, as soon as practicable, definitely declare the result. She even added that if you have the results, five people. So we do not have the results now. The full complement of the results. And I speak to you now, the results are trickling in. And as soon as practicable, the results will be declared by the presiding officer or the sorry, the returning officer of the presidential election who happens to be the chairperson of the election. You say that the results are trickling in. When you say trickling in, we know that they are coming in the regions. So are you able to tell us which regions are coming? So I I can only do so by very much. As I speak to you now, young so I, I don't have the uh, full complement of it. But I can assure you that the results are coming in and um, as soon as possible. As soon as we get the results. It's all right. Again, again, because the NDC had earlier indicated that uh, they had been the NDC representatives in the in the creation center here. So they had been there for a while. I, I'll have to interrupt, um, Israel. I'll have to interrupt uh, your interaction with Sylvia. No, because there's some. Uh, we can see that John Dramani Mahama is addressing the press. Let's go live now. Um, to thank the people of Ghana for what has been an exciting election. I want to state categorically and firmly that I've not congratulated any person. And no attempt should be made to steal this election. We will resist it. We thank the Ghanaian people for the confidence they've expressed in us. Uh, it's clear the Ghanaian people want a change uh, in this country. Ghanaians are tired of Akufuado and his government. Yes. Yes. We thank the electorate for giving us a working majority in parliament. 140 seats in parliament, which is a majority. And um, no attempt should be made to subvert that. I've looked at the uh, the results we've collated so far, and I'm excited, I'm happy with the results. And um, we've won in 10 regions out of 16, and um, the Ghanaian people have expressed uh, confidence in us. We would resist any attempt to subvert the will of the people. Some of what is happening is unacceptable, and 
Nana Akufado continues to show credentials that are very un undemocratic. You cannot use the military to try and overturn some of the results in constituencies that we have won. And so we will resist any attempt to subvert the sovereign will of the Ghanaian people. The right thing must be done. We've collated our results and we thank the Ghanaian people for the confidence they have in us. And um, we, we, we will give further details uh, later. But uh, we thank you very much. And um, our people should remain calm as uh, we wait for the final verdict. But we are happy that Ghanaians have voted for change. Thank you. We know that it's for you. It's for you. Watching the visuals from the residents of <coughs> the uh, flagbearer of the NDC, uh, John Mahama himself, now uh, approaching the microphone is the general secretary of the party, uh, John Singh. I see you in Ketia. That the MPP has started using you, the media houses, to churn wrong information. And um, we have, and, and fake news. We are aware that some of these media, new media houses, are calling the elections for Nana Kufadu. If there's anybody who has reason to jubilate, it is the NDC support base. And so we are urging our people that they have every reason to jubilate because they know that we have won majority in parliament yes. and because of that that positions us to select the speaker the committee chairman and so on and we know nobody can run this country without the majority in parliament and so we must send a strong caution to the government's attempt to use the military in fact the military have no role to play as the first instance in any electoral matters. We are aware that in Techiman, the military have been deployed to a collation center, shooting has happened, and two people have been confirmed dead now, and seven others are in, 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 in hospital. This is an attempt to change the results. Indeed, the electoral commission at Techiman has never pronounced uh, the Techiman constituency seat for MPP. But the military just rushed in, created confusion and so on. And they are going to other constituencies. We are aware of what is happening about the results in Sene uh, East. We are aware about what they are going to do in uh, Serioso, Takwa, and other places. We want to call on the peace-loving authorities in this country, Peace Council, the traditional authorities, the clergy, and so on. This is the time for you to speak to save this nation. We are annoyed. And we are asking the international community to warn the government to desist from using the military in elections to try to change the verdict of the people. This is, uh, you know, very, very strange. We have never seen this type of thing before. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us do everything that is uh, legally possible to ensure that the verdict of the people is not stolen. Our supporters have every right to go out and jubilate. <laughs> We have won all the deciding regions. We've won Greater Accra. We've won Central Region. And uh, we've won the previously existing Brong Ahafu region very convincingly, including winning the birthplace of Professor Buzia, of the Buzia Dankwa tradition. What else do we need to win the elections in this country? Even in Eastern Region. We've won close to 40% in Eastern Region and close to 30% in Ashanti Region. 
how can anybody be, be, be uh, 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 talking in the wildest imagination that Nana Kufuado can win this election? It's not possible. It is not possible, and we are not going to sit down. We are not going to sit idly by for the verdict of the people to be stolen. So we thank you very much. But let's call on the electoral commission. We are happy that, uh, you know, they've decided to shift their own timeline because we told them that it was not going to be possible for you to declare the results of these elections uh, 24 hours after the election. As we sit now, coalition hasn't gone anywhere. Constituencies are still doing coalition. Our agents in the EC strong room are relaying information to us. So we don't think that um, um, any credible results can be declared before tomorrow. And so let us keep our let us keep our fingers crossed and hope hope that electoral commission will do the needful to save the peace and integrity of this country. Thank you very much. So what you just uh, witnessed uh, is uh, a, an address first by the flag bearer of the NDC, uh, John Mahama, who in essence made some serious um, pronouncements. But I want to emphasize his call on the uh, supporters of the party to remain calm. Yeah. Um, and of course, he uses words they will resist if the will of the people is stolen. Your impression? Well, so listening to John Mahama and talking about how they're going to resist you know, if the will of the people is stolen, he makes reference to the parliamentary election. Now, John Mahama is talking about the NDC winning the parliamentary, but I'm told that uh, the interview, I mean, Marcel Okba is interviewing Spiro Gabba. Let's just go for that. Of seats in parliament in a democratic country, then quite naturally the parties members have a right to rejoice. I mean, jubilating does not mean declaration of results. It simply means that you are happy that you have won seats that NDC did not have before. I mean, if we have won 140 seats, that's a reversal of more than 40 seats that were originally the, you know, managed and owned by the NPP. But the, the main thing I think most Ghanaians should ask themselves is why is it that for the sake of democracy in Ghana, the Electoral Commission has never found it useful and fit to ask Dr. Farijan, the longest serving Ghanaian Electoral Commissioner who is alive, to come and help in the electoral process. This is a very good question. Where is Dr. Farajan? Why has the Electoral Commission given the impression that previous Electoral Commissioners have nothing to offer? Somebody who has occupied a position for almost 20 years before you has a lot to offer. So the absence of Dr. Farajan and the fact that the, in, the IPAC has never been given the opportunity in the party advisory committee to function properly is that we're among the signals that we all saw as Ghanaians about the possibility of this kind of situation um, ensuing. Is, is it the view of the NDC that you've won the parliamentary elections but lost the presidential? No, or you've won the presidential? No. Won, but because expect, because expect, well, the, the what, presidential what, what, candidate has been quiet on the presidential. He was very emphatic um, in a Facebook the, post the on the is not yet out. Okay. Uh, information on the presidential is not yet out. Of course, we are expecting to win, but from a presidential spokesperson's point of view, he didn't have the basis on which to declare himself uh, the, the winner of the election, except that we expect to win because we have won the parliamentary. And when you win the parliamentary, there's reason to believe that all things being equal, you'll also win the presidential. So it is that all things being equal that you are, you are, you are here to 
understand that the military are being used to overturn the decision of the people in certain constituencies with a view to changing the results of the election. That is the problem. Uh, finally, before you go, don't you think this posture of not waiting for the lecture commission to declare the results and the seat... declared the results today. I don't think anybody has declared the results of the elections today. Yeah, but we, we can we be patient. That, yeah, we are waiting. You are patient. Okay. But asking our people to rejoice is not lack of patience. We haven't declared the results. We are not authorized to declare the results. What our flag bearer said but was... But by extension, asking your supporters to go on the streets to go and jubilate to rejoice. means that they should... means you've won the election. And you're calling it in favor of your votes in parliament. We have majority of the votes in parliament, of the seats in parliament. So if the parliamentary seats are not mishandled or mangled, we shall have the majority. And that is a precursor of the presidential victory that we expect to announce by tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much for talking to us. Okay, so you just heard from Ecos Pio Gabra. Um, I mean, he contested as a flag bearer of the NDC um, before he did not win. But he's here today trying to support behind the NDC presidential candidate. And as you heard him um, talking about the comments by the NDC presidential candidate and the general secretary um, of the party, Johnson, is here doing Kitia. Let's try and get more of them. Let, let, let me see. Let's try and see if we can speak to some of the supporters um, who are gathered here. Let's find out from them if indeed they will want to uh, go onto the streets to go and celebrate as they've been urged to do by the um, general secretary um, of the party, Johnson is sitting. Let me talk to Fred Agbenyo. He's with the um, NDC. Let me find out from him what he also... Okay, so Fred is not willing to speak. And that is Marshall Awabada in the house, the residence of the uh, flag bearer of the NDC, John Dramani Mahama. Um, the point there, Marshall was asking um, Dr. Ekos Garba about the silence of John Dramani Mahama on the presidential race. He gives some clarity. He says he doesn't have those results yet and doesn't have a basis to mm. declare himself a winner other than to say they, however, expect to win because of what they believe to be they are strong showing in the parliamentary race. Well, um, Evans, you know one thing, if you have results of your parliamentary elections, yes, you have two agents in every constituency. You have one for the parliamentary candidate, one for the presidential candidate. And in many of the constituencies that we have declared results or we have certified results from, we have both the parliamentary and the you know, presidential. Right from yesterday when the NDC started speaking, it's been one thing about the parliamentary elections. Mm. They started by talking about how they've been able to flip 36 constituencies and they talked about how they believe they had about 143 later to 140 seats. It looks like for the NDC, the, I mean, the biggest gain in this election is the parliamentary election, mm. the parliamentary uh, you know, seats, mm. which they believe they have won mm. and are thus cautioning the NPP not to use the military to actually turn it in their favor. Mm. And also, listening to them, they say, if you have a majority in parliament, you can govern. You cannot govern without a majority in parliament. And clearly, you're seeing an, I mean, a signal that for the NDC, one of the things they would love to have is a 2008 situation when the election went into a runoff. If it happens like that, and if they do have the majority in parliament, look, I tell, you tell Ghanaians, we have the majority in parliament, if you really want a peaceful governance, you vote for us, yeah. and we can assure you. And I see Nikita that. hinted at that. Exactly. That you cannot govern exactly. uh, without a majority in parliament. I want to take you to a place in Greater Accra uh, Parliamentary uh, this year, something <clears throat> that, uh, that, that is playing out uh, today. And I want to focus on this area, Medina, uh, for you, and a story of Francis Xavier Susu, who has won this, flipped it. Flipped exactly. It. He flipped, flipped it. it. You um, big. Yes. 15,000 margin. So he pulls 61,972 to the incumbent Boniface Abubakar Siddiq's 46,799 votes. So uh, uh, Francis Xavier Sosu, 56.7% of the vote. Boniface has 42.8%. This is incredible. The margin there is, is significant. We're talking about almost what? Correct me. Almost 15,000. Yeah, it's 15, 000, more than 15,000 15, votes. Or 15,100. 80 votes. Okay. Now, 
the story there becomes becomes even more clear when you go to the difference Boniface wanted by in the last elections, and then you begin to appreciate yeah. um, the performance of Francis Xavier Susu uh, in that particular area. This is the this is a difference by nine thousand votes. Yeah, less than 9, <clears throat> Boniface Boniface wanted for Amadou Sorogo, who himself um, sort of lost out. Yeah, um, people didn't like him because he's been there for a while. He comes in and wins it with nine thousand votes. Right now, just from one election to the next, Francis Xavier Susu has managed to. Stretch from 9,000 to 15,000 votes. Thankfully, he joins us on the telephone line right now. Francis Xavier Susu, congratulations. Good evening, Chair Cherry's dearest. And I'm pretty sure you are still wrapping your head around what happened today. Have you come to terms with the results, the fascinating results that uh, put you in this commanding, victorious lead? Well, um Yes, I've really, really come to terms with the results. Um, I think the declaration happened the early hours of the day. Um, and we've had a cause to go around to say a big thank you to our supporters who made this happen. Um, and just um, trying to catch a little rest as we prepare to um, um, see the eventual outcome of the presidential election. And also... Uh, prepare to deliver on uh, and the mandate that the people have entrusted in, onto me. And this is a very significant mandate. Did you, even in your wildest imagination, believe, of course, every politician goes into the race to win, so that was a given. But did you believe that you win by 15,000 plus votes? Well, I, I believe that it was going to be overwhelming, but I did not, uh, uh, I, I could not predict exactly by what margin um, victory is going to be. Um, uh, when you look at the work that we had on the ground and you look at uh, the kind of connection I had with the voters on the ground um, and the responses mm. I had was going around campaigning, I knew for sure that. Um, we definitely was to win the election, uh, except that I didn't know exactly what margin. So the margin was actually uh, a bit shocking to me as well. Mm. So tell me, I mean, uh, thankfully we know you quite well because of your work as a human rights campaigner, human rights lawyer. But in a community like Medina, which is a pretty cosmopolitan, is sandwiched thereby Ayawaso West Wagon, and then on the other side is um, Adenta, places that I frequent, um, and Dom Kwabenya. You have all this um, host of people, I mean, settler communities, the wealthy, the, the, um, the middle class. The, uh, what work for you? I mean, how do you juggle a community like that with everybody else in one place? Well, I think that, uh, like I said from the beginning, I'm sure that um, my connection with the people, uh, because of the unique position I found myself uh, as um, a human rights lawyer and a campaigner for that matter, um, I've had the cause to represent many of the people, uh, uh, I mean, on pro bono basis, uh, when they've had issues either with the law or um, had some issues with other people uh, which they feel aggrieved about, and also given the fact that my own background growing up as a street kid, becoming a lawyer and practicing as a human rights lawyer, um, it kind of, um, uh, yeah, it kind of, uh, it kind of, it, it kind of, um, yeah, it kind of provided some kind of inspiration uh, to many of the young people who um, believed in me and believed in, in my dreams. Uh, you realize that Medina had over um, 1,000, no, over 150,000 voters, mm. uh, out of which we have 77% being the youth. Mm. So uh, connecting with the youth, uh, uh, with my persona, and also connecting with them with my message, I believe was something that worked out for me. Well, I'm sure you're looking forward to your first day in Parliament, and you can't wait to be sworn in. And so I'll, I'll let you be. I could, I could hear in your voice uh, fatigue. You're possibly running on adrenaline right now after the high of the declaration, correct? 
Absolutely, absolutely. And I really, really um, am committing myself to providing selfless leadership to the people of Medina and providing very quality parliamentary representation and also being an agent of development uh, for them and making sure that I reach out to every one of us uh, without discrimination and without any uh, form of uh, limitation, whether you belong to a particular political party or not, or whether you belong to any particular religious belief or not. But I'm just going to be an MP for all, and um, hopefully I can properly represent them. Okay, uh, Francis Evans, thank you very much for speaking to us. Uh, a swift reaction there, and, and all the best. He's going to be one saying. of the new faces yeah. uh, going to Parliament. Um, well, many, did you think? Did you expect that he would win? I, 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 I didn't expect that because of the how formidable Boniface Obuka Sadiq is. A, 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 a member of Parliament, a, a minister. Well, yes, you know Boniface is very formidable, but uh, if you you know, went to Medina finding out how the people were likely to vote, you'd get a signal that, you know, and Boniface wasn't that popular in the build-up to the election. Now, he talks about 77% of the, I mean, pop, I mean, voting population being the youth. And the challenge you have with Boniface was that he thought this was a done deal for him. So spent a lot of the time showcasing what he believed he had done mm. and thought that was going to win the election for him. This guy was building relationship. Okay, um, that's an important point. So he's a new face. The new face. He's yeah. a new face. He's going to go to Parliament. I want to go to take you to Ashanti region mm -hmm. and, and, and pull up another constituency that we've been watching um, very closely. Because another new face uh, is there. Uh, let's focus in on a uh in, uh, in Ashanti region. Uh, this is the constituency I want you to pay attention to right now for me. That's it. Right here. Ejisu. Because it just so is one of those areas that we had on the new phase, right? Yes. And as you can see there, you have John Kuma. So John Kuma is the CEO of the National Entrepreneurship and Innovative Innovation Program, mm. NAEP. And he, having unseated the then Deputy Minister of Roads and Highways, Kwabino uh, Usui Diomi, has won with 82.5% of the votes, pulling 69,897 to beat the NDC's candidate who polled 13,782 votes, representing 16.3%. And then you are going to see Parliament right now. I'm, I'm told he's on the line. Yes. Uh, hello, Mr. John Kuma. Thank you for your time here on your election headquarters as we begin to digest all this uh, for our viewers across the world. Uh, thank you, and thank you for joining us on Election Digest. Talk, talk, talk to me about um, your victory today in a GISO. Congratulations, first of all, um, and um, what word for you? Yeah, thank you, Evans, and thank you for having me. Um, I, I just listened to my brother and friend, uh, Lawyer Susu, and I want to wish him well. Uh, I mean, he, he's been my friend at the bar. I'm happy to be his colleague, uh, be going into parliament with him in the same year. Uh, he defeated a very competent, mature politician in uh, Medina, I wish him well. Mm. Um, it, it's been a sweet victory for me in Ejuso. Uh, of course, it's a stronghold, so we were expecting to win, and we just thank God for the massive victory that we got mm. today in the Ejuso constituency. Okay. Uh, stay with me. Uh, before I, I bring him in for the, my next question, I want to see, did he improve on exactly. the party's margins there? Because as he himself had just said, it was expected that he will win, win that um, because it's a, yeah. it's a it's a stronghold. But stay stay with me uh, for a minute, uh, Mr. Kuma, as we as we begin to to look at this and share with our audiences who are obviously watching and listening to us on uh, on myjoyonline.com and listen to us on radio as well. Winston, let's put up the trend for that. What what did you do there? So uh, in 2016, Kwabena Uso pulled 54,000. Mm. 54,000. So if you look at the real numbers, the figures, there's a, a huge improvement. Because he's at 60, 60 uh, plus. Uh, yeah, 69,000. Yeah. So that's a huge improvement. However, percentage wise, there's a reduction. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, that will give you the picture. So in 2016, you had 65,000 valid votes. Okay. 10 out of 77 percent. Let's get to 2020. We will get the picture clearly there. So Valid votes, 
83,000. That's an increase of 18,000. Mm. And uh, turn out 82%. He pulls 82.5% to Kabinu Usediomi's 83.8%. But, uh, yeah, go on. So, but, if, but if you look at the numbers, just the numbers, this is uh, you know, more of a 15,000 increase. Mm. But you should also look at that in relation to the increase in the number of voters. And here, we're talking about an increase of 18,000 from the previous elections figures. So he's managed to increase the actual number of mm. votes there, uh, of course, benefiting from the increase in the voter yeah. population also. Um, so, Mr. Kumar, so that's a story there. Um, in, yeah. in all aspects, you were doing, not only winning, but also increasing your party's actual votes there exactly uh yes so and i believe that uh we were able to stay in touch with the base of the party uh, and able to contribute in our votes uh, um unfortunately i think the line isn't helping um, let's see if we can get him to to interact with us but yeah. but clearly this also then you have to see how that relates to the presidential performance was he doing well only for himself or for, the or, president? or for the president as well because it definitely has improved well the president actually is is 69 69, 69, 000, 000, 000, yeah, 69 000. 000. that's 81 percent so he does better than the president he does better than, he the, does president. Better than the president he does yeah. better than the president i mean if you just want to uh, check it again for me that's 69 000. Yeah, against nine, both of them have sixty-nine thousand. Yes, but, uh, but you know, he has sixty-nine thousand eight hundred and ninety-seven, and the president has sixty-nine thousand three hundred and ninety-nine. That's just a slight margin. Just five hundred votes. Um, but there's a lot of human beings. A lot of human if you look human. at it that way. Yes, Mr. John Kumar, it appears that you did. Um, just a few hundred votes better than the president. Yes, um, that's true. Um, but uh, sixty-nine thousand for the president is quite a huge number to make a difference in the national tally. Absolutely. And it, this is a game about numbers, exactly. right? Um, yes. And so that every particular vote uh, counts. So um, exactly. here, here you are with, with this margin of victory in there. You're possibly looking forward to to, uh, to being sworn in, in into parliament. Um, give, give us a sense of um, what, what, what your mission is now, now that you've crossed this line. Uh, well, our mission is to contribute to enrich the debate in parliament to improve in policy direction the country and to also uh, help meet the expectation of our constituents. Uh, if you come to a just so there are a number of issues that uh, our constituency is expecting me to lead them in terms of lobbying for development projects and uh, helping the youth to find jobs among many other uh, things. So I think uh, I'm ready and prepared to pick up the tax to contribute to governors of the country and at the same time help with parliamentary duties and my constituency duties as well. Uh, John Kumar, thank you very much. Another new face in a JUSU, right. the, uh, the parliamentary candidate elect uh, for the uh, JUSU uh, constituency, uh, MP elect there in a JUSU. <clears throat> now, the thing I want, to, I want to note about his numbers, and I made a point to him, I mean, he got slightly more, just a few hundred more votes uh, than the president. The president is hoping to get do way, way better in Ashanti region. That's the only way he can cross the 50% plus exactly. one vote. And so every little vote counts. And so it, it comes down to how well are uh, his candidates in their strongholds doing for him. Exactly. And let's get to the 2016 results, because if you're John Mahama, you'll be looking at your percentage and say, yeah, presidentials, and say, okay, so let me look at it. 14.5%, mm. and it increases to 17%, I am sure, 17%, 2.5% increase. Mm. And that's good for you, if yeah. you're John Mahama. Because then you're increasing your percentage in the Ashanti region, which is the stronghold of your, I mean, uh, contender. And with, I mean, we've already, already made the point that the path to 50 plus one mm -hmm. would uh, include performing better in your opponent's strongholds, and you'll be excited about this result if you're John Mahama or if you're part of the John Mahama campaign. And in fact, for the NDC specifically, they will they hope you, they must get 25 percent or more in the Ashanti region if they want to win the national elections. And exactly. so this is key for them as well. Um, we'll be joining back um, Elton Brobe, who is a uh, pres private resident of the uh, president Nana Kufado, um, uh, who would give us an update there. We've heard already from. 
John Mahama from his residence with a press conference um, uh, um, calling for calm, but also indicating that they would not resist any attempt to steal um, the vote of the people um, because he has believed that they have a majority in, in parliament. And um, the calculation there is that they expect that majority to deliver them a, the presidential victory if you push this to a runoff, exactly. right? as we exactly. saw in the 2008 elections. We'll join him shortly. We also came from the Electoral Commission where Israel is standing by. EC still hasn't got clarity yet on when that declaration will happen. And so we're watching this space very closely. This is definitely the final lap. I want to go to the central region, if you may. Sure, let's go to the central. Let's go, because it's a swing, it's a swing, um, it's a swing region. But this is presidential. Now, central region, this is the story of central region as it stands. Just visually appreciate it. You have more blues, I see, yeah. than greens. But again, you're waiting for um, upper danger west. The fact that it isn't here doesn't mean that it hasn't been declared a constituency. We're checking this before we input it because we've come. You have Asin North, Asin Central. We have um, Infantiman. Infantiman is interesting because we have the case of the, um, the incumbent who passed on and a wife replaced him. I've seen pictures of him jubilating already. In fact, Kodonyako had told us yeah. uh, that um, the, the, the woman there had won. And so this will populate. We expect that to turn, exactly. to turn blue short, shortly. Uh, Goma East. Goma, um, Goma, um, Ewutu Senya East. Um, I think the results are in there, so yeah. that's the Ewutu Senya East. Yeah, uh, I okay. mean West. Uh, West. We know West. West. We know West because it's uh, um, George Anders' place. We did it overnight. Yeah. Um, but let's go into some of the key places. We have Esikuma Dobin Brakwa. Let's check that one. Let's check that one. One of your, one of your favorite places. Yes, Esikuma Dobin Brakwa. So Esikuma Dobin Brakwa with a 10 out of 80%. Mm. The NPP's Nana Kufa opposed 29,078 votes mm. to the NDC's 22,429 votes, about 6,000 votes difference. Mm. But it's important we look at the 2016 margin mm -hmm. and do a bit of analysis and find out whether it's anything to go by. So, um, okay, now I think well, parliamentary. parliamentary. Let's, 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 let's get to presidential. Mm. So, presidential. Um, 5,000 margin again, Akufado, uh, you know, winning there with uh, a margin of 5,000. Uh, now he increases it to uh, 6,000. And so you'd say, well, he's maintained an area that he won. But the parliamentary is where the issue is. Yeah. So, <coughs> so there's a story of uh, Sukumar Dobin Brakwa. It is largely an MPP hold, largely, yeah. but it, it does, doesn't mean that the NDC uh, can make inroads. As we've seen in 2012, where they voted for the NDC. Now, the story that begins to emerge there is that it, it is one of those non-purist swing constituencies. 996, as you see here, in 996, they, they vote NDC, yeah. both parliamentary, presidential, they win the national elections. In 2000, they switched, voted MPP, MPP, both parliamentary yeah. and presidential, MPP wins the national elections. The 2004, same story happens. They stayed with the MPP. In 2008, they stayed with the MPP, but the story at the national level changes. But, of course, by parliamentary, they kept faith with them. 2012, when the story, again, with the NDC was playing out, when John Muhammad's stronger showing, yeah. they switched, they flipped to the yeah. NDC, voted both parliamentary and presidential. They don't do skirts and blouse. No, they don't. They just vote for you. That's all. But they flip. In 2016, again, there was a tsunami for MPP, and then again, they flip back to the MPP. Now, your story, your question is, what have they done this the year in terms of parliamentary? This is a story this year uh, in terms of parliamentary uh, for Sukuma Odobin Brakwa. This is it. So this is a sketch and blouse. Exactly. This is the first time, and I just noted when we were doing the analysis a short while ago, that they, had, they don't do skirts and blouse. They don't, but they've done it now. They've done it now in this year's election. Exactly, because go to 2016, let me show you something. L let's, let's go through the numbers. Yes, this is 28,175 for the NDC's Al-Hassan Gansa. Mm. That's 51.5%. And the NPP's Emmanuel J polling 25,454, representing 46.6% of the vote. Okay. Now, the reason I want to go to uh, 2016 is that it would actually give parliamentary? us... Parliamentary? Uh, yes, parliamentary. It will give us an explanation of why that is the situation. Watch this. Anthony Efa. Mm. Now, he loses the primaries. He loses the NPP primaries. And from my checks in that particular constituency, 
after his loss, he felt unhappy. And there are instances when MPs lose their seats and then turn away from their constituency. In fact, there's a famous quote by a, from a member of parliament, and he says, Na mutu tiamia, emrena kan mm-hmm. If you vote against me, uh, for the remainder of my period as a member of parliament, who's going to look after you? Because then you've told me to prepare and go home. Mm. And according to my checks, the vote against Anthony Effa... In the party's primaries. In the party's primaries. Because for the executives, they felt this man wasn't doing a lot of things right, affected the NPP in this particular constituency. And that's not come as a surprise to me that he lost the constituency. They love the because he actually won by some 430 votes. Mm. So that was always easy to overturn. 430 votes mm. in that constituency. I want to I wanna return to the uh, 2020 story there, where this is Skerton Blouse. Yeah. And we, this is not the first time we've seen places that didn't use to be Skerton Blouse. What they, are, what they tend to be doing now, there's no trend yet, but at least a few we've seen, they are punishing the NPP press, uh, parliamentary candidates. candidates. Yeah. Okay? They are punishing the NPP parliamentary candidates, but rewarding their presidential candidate. candidates. Yeah. And listen, the president is winning, mm-hmm. but his candidate there is mm-hmm. losing. And what that tells you is that, look, people sometimes look at who's contesting and not necessarily the party symbol mm. when it comes to parliamentary elections. Yes, you expect that, you know, the presidential candidate goes around and says, you need to vote for me because if you vote for me and you do not vote for our parliamentary candidates, I cannot get majority in parliament. And you can understand why the NDC is claiming majority in parliament and saying all things being equal, that could translate into victory for them. And so if that is a situation, you have the presidential candidate saying, vote for my candidate as in my parliamentary candidate. However, the people sometimes send you the signal that, look, we cannot vote for your parliamentary candidate just because you are contesting. We want your parliamentary candidate to also earn it. Mm. He must show us why we should be sending him to parliament. And if they believe he hasn't shown enough reason why he should be in parliament, he's voted against. That's it. Um, one of the things also that for me strikes me is the sophistication of the Ghanaian voter. Yeah. I mean, since 1982, there was a time in our democratic maturity process where it wasn't about issues anymore i mean we complained about this for a long time it was about a lot of insults a lot of uh, tribalism a lot of who is handsome than you a lot of who speaks my language but the Ghanaian voter has become very sophisticated that they are able to distinguish um i like the bigger picture yeah. as in i like the president i like them to be the executive because i like the way possibly they manage the the country but at my local level in my little constituency, I honestly do not like my representative. Mm-hmm. And so they are able to make these calculations. And as we're beginning to see, they are saying, well, continue in some cases at the presidential level, but I'm going to hurt your candidate in there. Sometimes it could be a protest also. Exactly. I, I, I don't like the presidential candidate, but I hate the parliamentary candidate more. Mm-hmm. And so I, I want to show you that I, I'm not completely enthused about your leadership. So I want to give it to him. And hopefully you get the signal that exactly. something is not entirely accurate and right in that particular constituency. One of the things somebody told me uh, before election 2020 was that he said, I am disappointed in Akufuado, but I do not like John Mahama. So I am going to vote for Akufuado, but as a way of punishing him for disappointing me, I'm voting against his party's parliament, parliament, yeah. parliamentary candidate. And so in that particular situation, that person went out there and voted against, you know, the uh, NPP's uh, candidate. But just to add to this, when I was in uh, Zebula for ballot box, uh, you know, the Boko ballot box, one person did some analysis, and that stuck with me. He said, in voting, three things would affect my decision. Mm. One, my local community. Two, my constituency in general. And three, the national issues. Mm. So that's the situation in there. That's the situation in there. And so that's how uh, some of these things eventually pan out. I want to go to another uh, 2016 um, skirt and blouse constituency. And this is our friend, um, Felix Kwachi Fosu's yes. constituency. This is Ebra Sebu Kwaman Kese. And that's the story there. What's the story, Winston? 
Well, so there you have it in 2020. Now, Elvis Morris Donko of the NPP, who is an incumbent member of parliament, posed 25,048 votes to defeat his NDC contender, Felix Kwachiofosu, who pulled 24,000 872. The margin, the percentage margin of victory is 0.04%. No, 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 176 votes. 176 yes. votes. But we've seen 80, 81 votes also. We've seen 81 votes. election. So that's a very close one. Very close. And, 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 and if you're Felix, look, I'm very honest with you, I mean, I've contested elections before. If you're Felix and you get to this position, and you come so close to winning and you lose, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. This will hurt more. It, well, exactly. I mean, exactly. It will hurt more because then you, you, it's more like you're seeing Kenan. Yeah. You're almost close to it. And in the uh, parliament, you first crossed the pole. You know what I mean? He, so, uh, sad one for him. And, and, and for these painful defeats, you are always in it to the final whistle. Exactly. It's like football. I, I love Manchester United. I don't know where your team is. I love Man United. Okay, so we're on the same page. We're yeah. playing tonight. I mean, well, it, it hurts the most when we are, you know, winning, you know, not winning, even drawing, and you're, the game is almost over. And then the final kick of the game, they score you. <laughs> that, it, that, it's just devastating. No, exactly. Because you are in the race until the final minute, and then you lose. This is what happened to Felix here. Yeah. yeah. Um, but listen... He will know that that's the nature of politics. He will know, Evans. But you see, the other thing about this particular constituency also, if we go to 2016 uh, in, in, in the parliamentary election, and I want to make uh, this point because, um, you know, it's an area that I've been studying. Now, Elvis Morris Donko with Samuel K. Hayford, then the uh, Samuel K. Hayford. Now, Elvis wins by 50.6%. To his 46.7 percent this is a social worker mm. in that constituency he was an ngo and has been liaising with the people he's been in constant touch with the people and i say this and i repeat this again that politics when it comes to politics we say feelings that are formed by emotions cannot be dislodged by mere reasoning that is what is working for this man okay so um he he wins it elvis morris donko wins it in uh felix kwachi for shoes an area that many people thought because of yeah. his profile exactly right because of his profile uh, she win it, but Felix lost. And one of those, that's why I say in, in, in when elections are held, be cautious about numbers. Mm -hmm. Because it's one of those areas that I, I saw people circulate on social media very early in the day that, in fact, NDC actually... Elvis Efri Ankara yes. actually congratulated Felix Kwashiofosu for winning that constituency. But like you're saying, look, if you want to be NP, and I told you that uh, uh, Elvis Morris don't call, was a social worker. I mean, mm -hmm. a social worker. He was where he had an NGO in that community. And he had been dealing with the people over a long period of time. Mm. So this is somebody they know. Mm. And if they know you, the pe our people say, Nipa e nim nano pani yan so kani e shini nima jo. If I know you, I do not need candle or light to see you at night. Mm. So this is a clear situation. He's unlucky this time around. Now that he's shown his face, if he continues and consistently visits his constituency, Maybe like in 2020. I, I want to go to another constituency in the central region, and this is the home constituency of the NDC's running mate, um, Commander Dine Guafu Ebrim. Yeah. Constituency. Um, and this is 2020, and it's Samuel Meltz. Yes. Brother of the late Meltz. Um, how won it? But I'm told that we have George Merkuduka, mm. the MP for Takwan Swaim, whom we are told almost. Lost that constituency. That question is in, uh, is in the Western region. Western region. Western region. Let's so, pull yes, let's pull yeah. the Western region out and uh, check the margins uh, because uh, uh, George Merkuduka, so this is Western North. Let's look at the Western region. George Merkuduka, we're told, uh, is joining us, having won uh, that particular constituency. So, uh, there you go. Um, Western region. Okay, we're waiting for the results in the Takwa. Uh, but what's the, what's the story in, in, well, in, the, he, in Takwa? Right? He had an independent candidate challenging him. And so, for the NDC, you had Siedun Ketia make mention of the NPP trying to use soldiers to intimidate persons, and they cite Takwa and Swahim as one of those constituencies where they're trying to intimidate people to actually flip it. But George Merkuduka is emerged victorious, and he joins us now. Uh, Mr. Merkuduka, um, thank you for joining us here on your election headquarters. Uh, this must have been a pretty tough one for you, even for you who. Uh, consider yourself a, a, a political, a politically astute, been in the game for quite a while. 
I'm pretty sure you didn't expect this. We don't seem to have him on the telephone line. We'll try and get him when we yeah. do. Uh, we'll bring him to you uh, shortly here on your election headquarters. But that's a story there in, uh, in Takwa and Shoaim. I want to go back to the central region because it's such a, an important swing uh, region. Um, where should we go next, Wayne? Saying we could do... Um, okay, so we've done... Um, should we do... Maybe we should do a Jumakong in Yanisiang. And no. this is the area of your, of your friend. I want to do parliamentary <laughs> first because a parliamentary story... <laughs> It's, uh, it's always interesting. Keso Ato Fosi is there, former deputy, uh, former deputy finance minister, a minority spokesperson on, on finance. He wins it. Handsomely. He wins handsomely. Uh, you know, so prior to the election, lots of conversation about the possibility of he losing to, uh, you know, Dr. Rashid. Mm. Now, he pulls 39,000.